Hello everyone, Chef Rob Stinson here, and today we're mixing things up with my Thai shrimp stir fry. We're also going to talk about why Thai cuisine is one of the healthiest you can eat. Plus, if you like it hot and spicy, I've got good news for you. Hot is healthy. We'll get started right after a quick break. Welcome back. You know, I love fresh shrimp straight out of the Gulf. And why not? Shrimp is delicious, low calorie, and a great source of protein. And they're part of the great Mississippi food industry. I love Asian style cooking, and shrimp goes great with it. Now, you know, as we look at these, and you can see, these are beautiful, wild caught American shrimp. There's none better. These are peeled. And I use a little bit smaller size shrimp on this because it'll mix together so well with all the rest of the food that we're doing. And you know, let's talk about, I mean, the very first ingredient when this hits a hot pan or in Asian cooking, a hot wok would be sesame oil. We've talked a lot in other episodes about being really careful with the amount of oil you use. To control fat, you want to be conscious of that. But there are a lot of health benefits to using sesame oil in your cooking. Sesame oil can help lower your blood pressure, decrease your blood sugar levels, and increase the antioxidants in your blood. Try drizzling some on a salad sometimes in place of olive oil. I love the flavor. It has a beautiful smoky flavor to it as well. Now, you know, going with the first ingredients in here, let's start off and have a little bit of fun. And again, put a diffuser on your oil. This is sesame oil in this small bottle. It's very powerful. You don't need a lot. And we want to keep that fat content down. So I'm only going to put about a quarter of a teaspoon right now, and then I'll add a touch more to make it about a half a teaspoon total. Then we're going to take some of our pan coating and spray the pan just so everything does not stick. And I move that oil around in the pan because that pan is good and hot. And that pan is perfectly ready. Now, we're going to start with garlic and shrimp. And now that we've lowered your blood pressure with sesame oil, we're going to help out the heart a little bit more by adding garlic. Garlic can help lower your cholesterol and can even help prevent clots from forming. So let's go ahead. We're going to throw the shrimp in first. I've got a little bit extra in there for our beautiful staff here. And our minced garlic. Going to be the very first things that we put into the pan now. I've let the heat drop down a little bit because we're going to talk about all the ingredients because there are a lot of ingredients in this dish. This is probably one of the more, I would have to say, not complicated, but more preparation ahead of time dishes that we've ever done. Let's come back to this board now, and I'm going to start laying some of these out. Snow peas, green onion, carrots, red onion, cilantro. You know, let's talk about cilantro. There's no substitute for fresh cilantro. Try it sometime. Cilantro is another ingredient that can help lower bad cholesterol. Cilantro is an antioxidant, and it may actually help improve sleep quality. So don't forget, use it fresh. Now, on the side of this, on the other side of this table, I've got all kinds of other ingredients. And the main thing you want to think about in this, I love when you cook in an Asian style. Appearance is every bit as important as flavor. And by that, I mean this. When you look at how the carrots are cut, how the onions are cut, the snow peas are cut, one shrimp being cut, they're all basically the same size. They're all about an inch and a half long, and that's uniformity in the cut design that Asian food is known for. So let's go ahead and throw in our carrots and our onions. Snow peas take a little bit less. Green onion to get some color in there and flavor. Black pepper. And we're going to spice it up last, but let's 
toss this. Now, we can see we're going to hit the heat up and deglaze the side of that pan a little bit. Move it around a little bit and get those shrimp cooking. Wow, I can already get a great flavor from it. Now we can toss it. Beautiful colors already in there. We can go ahead and add our snow peas. And as that temperature is up on the pan, we're going to talk a little bit on the idea of taking what is typically in a Thai dish, which is oftentimes coconut cream and peanuts. And normally a peanut sauce, a seafood sauce, maybe a little soy sauce, everything there has so much salt. We're not going to go that route, and we're not going to go with the coconut cream because it's got such a high fat content. We've got in here, in front of me, a little sugar-free, fat-free coconut syrup. I actually picked it up at a coffee shop. We're going to add that flavoring in along with some skim milk and then add in what is a low fat and low sodium peanut butter. And you're going to say, wow, that's just kind of crazy sounding. We want to mix that peanut butter into that cream and that coconut, and it's going to give it just a beautiful base flavor that is going to mimic that Thai peanut coconut sauce. Now, we're going to throw our cilantro in at this point. Got to love the aroma. The cilantro immediately gives off, and you can see this is one place where I didn't toss it. I want to really get that peanut butter and milk and coconut mixed in there and throw that last portion in. So let's get rid of everything that we don't need at this point. Wow, great looking flavor. Great looking color rather, and I know the flavor is in there. All right, we're going to add, now I mentioned, instead of a fish sauce. This is a little vegetable stock. We want to get a little added juice in. And that vegetable stock is salt free, fat free. You can find it at your local store. Tell you, the aroma coming off of this is just incredible. Now on the other side of this, we're going to turn the heat down because those shrimp are just about finished. We're going to talk at the tail end about adding some spice, but we actually are going to make some brown rice instead of the traditional white rice. And I'm going to finish that off after a quick break, but we want to get it started now. So all we put in was two parts vegetable stock to one part brown rice. And we'll put that on the heat and let that cook throughout. We've actually got some brown rice already cooked and I'll show you the versatility of keeping brown rice. And We've talked about that and we will continue to talk about how great brown rice is for you, how easy it is to store it to where you can actually keep it frozen after you've cooked it. You can keep it in the refrigerator after you've cooked it. And in this case, I have some brown rice already cooked because we're going to do a takeoff on an Asian actual fried rice, kind of like a, a brown, I guess the easiest way to say it'd be a brown fried rice. And keep that, you know, a little bit on the healthier side. And that's what we really want to focus on. So now we've got our rice in our stock, shrimp have cooked. Let's talk a little bit about spicy foods. Spicy foods get their heat from a compound called capsaicin. And the new research has discovered many health benefits to enjoying spicy foods. The increase in the body temperature that you get after eating spicy foods may shift the body from burning carbohydrates to burning fat, and capsaicin makes you feel fuller, which helps you reduce your caloric intake. It also has some cancer-fighting properties and can cause tumors to shrink. So all kinds of good reasons to add a little spice. So, 
Hey, we're talking about it. Let's do it. Little crushed red pepper. All right, now I'm not going to add too much in there. I'm going to turn the heat off on this dish. And then I have a little Thai chili sauce. And if you're saying, well, gee, where do you get that? Now look, as you see that go in the pan, you see that little tiny dab in the center? Trust me. That is all you need. It is very spicy, deceivingly spicy. So now at this point, we're going to toss everything throughout. And I'm going to actually get my tongs in the middle. And let's take <clears throat> and let that cook. When we come back, we're going to make a healthy Asian slaw using bok choy. We're also going to talk about some health benefits of fresh ginger. So come right back. Ever since I've been a little girl, I've been involved in farming. My dad and mom has always had a, a, a farm and a vegetable farm. Well, I got about 15 acres here. Then I got acre, acre and a half in two or three different places, two, two of the places in Simpson County. Brenda's Produce is one of the oldest farmer's markets in Mississippi, just off West Street in Jackson. And that's where you'll find Brenda seven days a week selling the freshest produce in town. We're here at the farmer's market from April, middle April, till uh, first of November. During the growing season, 90% of everything I sell is my daddy's. I have watermelons, I have cucumbers, I have okra, I have squash, I have uh, bell peppers, I have hot pepper, just about any kind of vegetable. And the reason we have such a good demand for what I grow, if it ain't fitting for me to eat, it ain't fitting for you to eat, and I don't care. It. When I hear of a 37-year-old person dying of a heart attack, or a 27-year-old having a massive stroke. I contribute a lot of that to their eating habits. I think it's very important for people to know where their produce comes from, what has been used on it. I've had people to ask me, is your daddy sprayed anything on this corn? I pull it back and there's a worm at the top of it. I said, no, because he said anything he sprays on this corn to kill that little worm right there, then it's going to hurt you too. I mean, we have to have money to live like everybody else, but it's really not so much the money as it is the smiles on the people's faces when I say, yes, this is Daddy's tomato. It doesn't cost a penny to be nice to people, and that's how we run our business. Welcome back. Bok choy is one of the odd-looking leafy vegetables that you walk right past in the produce department on your way to pick up lettuce. Here's what you're passing up. Bok choy is a low-calorie, low-carb, vitamin C-rich vegetable. There's even evidence to suggest that bok choy can help prevent certain types of cancers. So you've got all kinds of great reasons to use it, and I love the flavor it has. Now, I blend it with ginger. So let's talk a little bit about fresh ginger, which you're seeing right here. That's ginger root. And fresh ginger from ginger root is a must-have for a healthy Asian dish. Ginger can help pregnant women overcome the nausea and vomiting associated with pregnancy and is a safe alternative to anti-vomiting drugs. Ginger also helps with heartburn relief, migraine relief, all kinds of great reasons but you've got to use it fresh. So I thought I'd take the time today and show you how easy it is. Okay, 
Everybody at home has probably got one of these things hiding in the closet, right? You might grate cheese with it. You might take a little lemon peel, orange peel. Well, we're going to use it today after we manicure this ginger, and I want to show you how simple it is. Take a ginger piece, and only need a small piece. Let's save this piece for another dish. Cut a side off. Don't throw any of it away. Save it all so you can flavor sauces and soups with it. Then cut down to take the skin off. All right, and again, like I said, save all that skin. All the nutrients in most vegetables are in the skin. And we've gotten basically everything off, except a little bit on the ends. All right, now we're going to take those last pieces, clean up a little bit, and come directly into our mixing bowl with our ginger. And I'm going to choose the side where there's a little bit smaller holes, but not the smallest. As you push down is when it's really taking the ginger. We're looking for about a quarter teaspoon. Ginger is very strong in flavoring. Don't want to use too much, but it has just such a great aromatic quality to it. And I love that kind of stomach settling side as well. Now, how do you get that off? Very simple. I take a little knife. I come from the top, and I come from the bottom, and it'll fall right out. And what we have in the bottom doesn't look like much, okay? Don't be deceived. That's plenty of ginger. One little piece is trying to escape here. Uh-uh. Not so lucky today. All right, now, in with the ginger, we're going to take a little vegetable stock and the juice of a lemon. Again, if we squeeze it facing up, it's easier to keep the seeds from going in, although it's not going to kill you either way. Little black pepper, little garlic. This is going to become the marinade for our bok choy and our slaw. And a little bit of our fat-free yogurt, which I just love to use. Now mix this up well. And then, let's slide that to the side, and what we're going to do is take a few leaves of our bok choy. You see how beautiful those are? Look at that. Really, really simple to use. Pop that right back, and remember, you can use every piece of this. So, we'll take this portion and save it for our stock pot. And now, as thin as you can slice it, and this is when a cleaver really comes in handy. We're slicing it thin so the marinade will get in to as much of the bok choy as possible. All right, so let's already take this and put into our slaw dressing. Slide the green. We're using all of it, too, by the way, every bit of it. The green is every bit as good as the stem. I love to get all that flavor in. Cleavers are so great. I mean, look at that. Your board's clean. Let's take this now, toss it, and that slaw is absolutely delicious. I can smell. I wish you could get the aroma of that ginger. Okay, now we're going to let that sit to the side. All right, let's move that over to the side for the moment, and we're going to focus in on everything going in our brown fried rice. We've got some red bell pepper. We actually, I threw some green bell pepper in here I had. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get fresh peas. And guys, think about that. If you can't get something in one of the recipes, substitute it. Fresh minced garlic, onion, celery, all of that beautiful vegetable will make this flavorful. Now, I said we were saving that other portion, about an eighth of a teaspoon of our sesame oil. And look at it, smoke in that pan. Do the same thing with the pan coating. Move it away from the heat. Put it back on. 
And that pan is really hot, so we're going to throw all the veggies in. Celery, onion, red bell pepper, green bell pepper, our peas, and our garlic. All right, now at this point in time, what we want to do is stir this as if it were a wok. And we're browning those vegetables on all sides. And I know at this point you're probably saying, well, what happened to the rice? We're going to put the rice in at the tail end. And again, I told you I kind of cheated. I already have some cooked. Our rice is nearly done on the other side. But to be safe, we're going to add in our fried rice. and toss this. Wow, look at the color in that rice. Is that not amazing? Little water around the side. What does that do? Remember, deglazes your pan. Gets everything where you want it. And I love the show of taking and searing in this Asian style. Let's talk about the presentation for a moment. You notice the rice are small kernels. Every vegetable that would go into the rice should be indicative of the size of the rice. So in other words, small diced vegetables. The only thing tricky about cooking this Asian style of food is the amount of time it takes to cut your vegetables ahead of time. So remember that. It makes it very simple. I'm going to get a little bit more water, hit it with just a little bit more water on the side. And you can keep adding that water in. The rice will absorb it. And at this point, you've got all the flavoring. We've got our shrimp. We've got our slaw. I've got one more trick that I think you have to see. Fried rice is famous for having fresh eggs cooked right into it, white and yellow, all right? So we're splurging, remember. Eggs in moderation are a great thing. Egg whites you can have as much as you like. But I really want the yolk in this. It's important. So we're going to crack the egg right into the rice. And you're saying, wow, that looks really odd. Stirring it in. Let it hit that pan. And anytime you've seen fried rice, you've got this. What an incredible blend of flavor that's going on. We're going to turn our heat off because we don't even need any more than the heat in the natural pan itself. And you can see the egg white. You can see the egg yolk. It has all blended in to that pan. So I tell you, the flavor you know is going to be incredible. Now we can toss it. And there we go. So everything is getting ready here. So we're going to take a short break, but remember to check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash MPB Fit to Eat. There you'll find links to all of our recipes and all the nutritional information. So come right back. Thanks. Welcome back. Let's talk about the nutritional facts. 514 calories, 34 grams of carbs, 55 grams of protein, 17 grams of fat, and 5 grams of fiber. So you can see, unbelievably healthy. And let me tell you, what we really did in this dish that I think is really important, we kept the salt out. Now, let's go ahead and plate this. Our fried rice. We're going to go ahead and plate on this side. Beautiful color. Wow, the aroma of it is unbelievable. Staff's going to eat well here. We got a good amount. Now, our shrimp on this side, along with those snow peas and all that beautiful kind of coconut cream sauce. Look how beautiful that came out. And then our slaw, which we're going to put right in the front. I love this dish. Over the 
shrimp, a little bit of our chopped cashews, and then we're going to take and put some of our fresh cilantro leaves over here on the rice. So you've got a little bit of garnish on all sides. It's just such a great way. We've taken the salt and sodium out of this, so eat healthy, enjoy Asian food, be careful with your sauces, because those can be the gotchas that end up adding sodium, calories, or fat, and ruin your healthy lifestyle. But, <clears throat> excuse me, don't you think you have to live off a diet? You don't have to live off a diet of water and rice to be healthy. Enjoy a delicious meal like this one. Join us on Facebook and let us know what you're doing to stay healthy. See you again soon.